So the courts can look at many different things when they're doing the just and right division. And part of that looking is the, obviously fault, fault in the end of the marriage, how long the marriage lasted, you know, five years, 10 years, those are all things that weigh in favor of, of, of a disproportionate division, the capabilities of the parties to work, gainful employment, physical capabilities, educational capabilities, opportunities, and uh, also the size of the separate estate, if any. You know, if one spouse came into the marriage with a sizable separate estate and the other didn't, that's a factor, or both came in with sizable separate estates, et cetera. And all of these factors, and this is not an exclusive list, but all of these factors can weigh in favor of what's at issue in the division in that just and right analysis. So the courts, and whether you try your case to a court, to a judge, or to a jury, those those questions about capabilities, fault, wasting of marital assets, how how strong is the evidence of waste or diminishment of marital assets. And you know earlier in this video series I gave an, ex an example of somebody going to the casinos too frequently. I mean if we're talking about a, a, a few hundred or a few thousand dollars, if we're talking tens of thousands of dollars, that might be something that, that could be perceived as, as fairly egregious and frowned upon no matter what, what county you're in because you're taking away monies that could be used for retirement investment, that could be used to pay off marital debt like a, like a home, uh, you know, pay, pay down the equity or pay into the equity on a marital home or getting rid of student loans or facilitating children's college education and, and, a, and juries and judges may frown upon that wasting of assets no matter where you are, especially if it's large. So these are all, uh, none of them exhaustive, but these are just all factors that go right to that issue of what could be just and right.